Our topic today is clinical experience for pre-PA and pre-med students. To be competitive, especially for PA or medical school, it's important to get quality clinical care experience. The number of hours required by PA schools varies, but it can be higher than 2,000 hours at some schools to be competitive. So check the individual school requirements for those schools you plan to apply to. For medical school, plan on needing one to two different experiences, each lasting at least six months to a year, totaling 150 plus hours. First, let's focus on pre-PA clinical hours. PA programs especially will be looking for two types of care experience. Healthcare experience, or HCE, is work in a clinical setting where you are not directly responsible for a patient's care. Whereas, with patient care experience, or PCE, you are directly involved with the care of the patient. For this reason, PCE is also known as direct patient care and is generally considered to be more valuable compared to HCE. This is because it often requires more responsibility and possibly demonstrates more advanced preparation for the rigors of PA school. Regardless of the type of clinical job you have, it's important to document the actual activities you performed and the time spent doing each activity. PA schools vary on how they categorize HCE and PCE hours, but examples of positions that typically fall under the PCE category include CNA, MA, PCT, EMT, paramedic, dental assistant, phlebotomist, and physical therapy aid. However, maybe you have one of these positions, but some of your time involves more administrative work, such as scheduling, billing, or answering phone calls, then these hours should be logged under HCE when you're entering them into CASPA. Examples of work that typically falls under the category of healthcare experience, or HCE, include shadowing, pharmacy technician, medical sales, medical billing, CPR trainer, clinical front desk, health advisor, hospital housekeeping, and mortuary services. Medical scribe can be categorized either way, depending on the particular PA school. So it's definitely important to check individual schools for their specific criteria. Now let's discuss a few of the patient care experiences in more detail. CNA experience is usually accepted as direct patient care by most PA schools. To become certified, you'll most often need to complete a three-month training class and exams. There is probably a community or technical college near you that offers this training. Locations where CNAs often work include assisted living centers, skilled nursing facilities, nursing homes, and hospitals. In some cases, the facility itself may offer training to become a nursing assistant, which may be either certified or non-certified. Common activities for CNAs include assisting residents with activities of daily living, such as dressing, bathing, shaving, applying deodorant and lotion, brushing teeth, and helping with dentures and hearing aids. Perineal care is called pericare and is washing the anal and genital area. It can be done during bathing or as a separate action. It is important to do regularly because it prevents infections, itching, burning, odor, and skin breakdown in the perineal area. CNAs also take vital signs, do blood glucose testing, and perform basic first aid for the residents. In some cases, they, they may perform involved wound care. They also administer oral meds, apply patches and creams or ointments, and administer eye drops and nasal sprays. In general, however, they do not administer injectable medications. The registered nurse would do that. Shifting gears now, let's talk about medical scribes in the emergency department and what they do. In short, they are personal assistants to healthcare providers. Their primary role lies in accurate and efficient documentation 
of relevant patient information real time, thereby assisting the provider with patient flow through the ED. For each provider patient encounter, a scribe may be asked to document relevant patient information onto the EMR, including vital signs, history of present illness, and physical examination findings. They also search for pertinent medical records from the EMR, record and notify the provider of results from laboratory and imaging studies, document pertinent details from the provider's consults with other specialists, document updates on patient's progress notes, and record disposition details. For example, if the patient is admitted, they document diagnostic and treatment measures taken in the ED leading up to transition of care. Scribes document the patient's discharge summary and are expected to, to especially take detailed notes for patients that are discharged against medical advice. Scribes may be hired by the facility where they work, by a medical group contracted with the facility, or may be hired by a medical scribe company that is contracted with the facility for the hiring purpose. Scribe America is an independent company that scribes are often hired through. Qualifications to apply include having a high school, high school diploma, committing to work as a scribe for at least three months, and being able to work for a minimum of two shifts per week. During the hiring process, you may be asked to demonstrate or be trained by way of computerized testing, interview, and or orientation session on the following good penmanship, typing proficiency organization skills, knowledge of medical terminology, and an ability to multitask. After you're hired, there is an orientation period where you'll become proficient with the EMR and learn the prop proper methods for documentation. Next is a supervisory period where a more experienced scribe will follow you around and evaluate your work. After you receive certification, you'll be subject to periodic assessments to assess your competency and assure quality and consistency. There is a staggering potential for learning if you choose to become a scribe. You will gain valuable experience with the EMR that will translate into any medical specialty. You will also gain exposure and insight to the provider's medical decision-making process. Additionally, you'll learn the clinical reasoning skills like interpreting labs, chest x-rays, as well as EKG and other workup methods. Being in the ED setting, you will also gain exposure to a broad spectrum of disease processes, each with varying acuity. You will be exposed to emergency medicine, other specialties, and other healthcare providers. Doing so, you will observe typical workflow, variability of patient population, extent of flexibility of insurance reimbursement, work-life balance of healthcare providers, the rigor and length of training, and examples of excellent bedside manner. An advantage for medical assistants compared to medical scribes is the fact that it offers an opportunity for direct patient care. As with CNAs, MAs perform vitals on patients. They also, also often interview patients for medical history and most MA activities are done in an outpatient setting, which is typically a lower stress environment. Due to this direct patient contact, MA is often considered quite positively by PA schools. Another plus is the exposure and MA gains to the pros and cons of the particular provider's specialty and work environment. A con for MA includes less provider interaction, compared to medical scribes since the MA is mostly just with the patients. Hence, being an MA may not be ideal for the most motivated learner. To become an MA in most cases is two years, which may be seen as a negative since medical scribes can do on-the-job training and CNAs and EMTs only have about a three-month training program. Many community or technical college, colleges offer MA programs which are essentially equivalent to an associate's degree. 
EMTs also have a great opportunity for direct patient care as they stabilize critically ill patients and assume responsibility in truly life-threatening emergencies. This affords them the opportunity to develop clinical reasoning while practicing on patients. Like medical scribes, they are also introduced to documentation as they are responsible for writing up patient care reports. Unlike medical scribes, EMT training typically costs around $1,000. And autonomy is limited, limited in that EMTs are required to follow narrowly defined protocols. EMTs' exposure beyond emergency presentation is limited since they aren't able to observe as many different pathologies or observe the physician's medical decision-making process like scribes do. The MDM process that EMTs miss out on includes being able to observe the physicians reasoning through the differential diagnosis, including timely use of clinical gestalt and pretest probability or PTP in the process. Also being able to observe proper bedside manner to the combative patient. Demanded, demanding patient, worried well patients, and mentally altered patients. Also being able to observe the physician utilizing evidence-based decision-making skills to determine when to order certain diagnostic studies, administer certain medications or procedures, call for consults, and discharge, monitor, or admit the patient. Shifting gears a little bit now, let's talk about clinical experience for pre-meds. Here are key points to consider when deciding which clinical experience fits best, as well as points to remember while performing clinical experiences. This list especially relates to pre-med students. Remember that both paid and unpaid experiences count. Choose what gives the greatest opportunity to observe clinical care in action and gain an understanding of the profession. Shoot for experiences in both inpatient and outpatient settings. This will give you greater diversity in experience, which medical schools like. Strive to begin early during undergrad and remember that consistency over a longer period of time is best. It's advisable to limit working with family members and if possible, concentrate on working with the underserved. As you have experiences in healthcare and with patients, consider those that may write you a letter and do this early if possible and keep notes of memorable stories from clinical experiences as these may be useful in interviews and personal statements. Now for some questions. Pause the video now and think of your answers. If you answered the following, you are correct. And some more questions. The following are correct. Thanks for watching.